Topic 5, Stock Splits. A stock split alters the number of shares outstanding, but does not change the recorded value of the shares outstanding. This is often done to manipulate or influence the value of shares on the open market to make them more attractive to investors. For example, if you have one share outstanding for $100, a stock split would mean you have two shares outstanding for $50 each. A $50 share is more accessible to a greater number of investors. Therefore, more investors are likely to want the $50 share, thus driving up the price through influence. A reverse stock split is as the name implies. It's where instead of going from one share to two, a reverse share, a reverse stock split would take two shares and turn them into one. In both instances, this does not impact the face amount of the value of um, shares outstanding. How do we account for these? Only a memo entry is required. The value of share capital and retained earnings does not change. The value of total shareholders equity does not change. However, we do change the number of shares outstanding to reflect this stock split or reverse stock split. Additional matters to consider. A two for one stock split has the same effect as a 100% stock dividend, where the number of shares outstanding is doubled, but the proportion owned by each shareholder has not changed. Despite this, a regular journal entry is usually required for a stock dividend, whereas a memo entry is required for a stock split. A stock split will alter the earnings per share numbers as the amount of shares outstanding changes. Prior year earnings per share and dividends per share must be recalculated and restated to maintain the comparability. We'll talk more about that in a subsequent chapter. As well, conversion rights must also be adjusted. For example, if preferred shares had the ability to be converted into five common shares before the two for one stock split, after the split, the conversion rate would be one preferred share for 10 common shares. Let's look at a question. Pete bought 100 shares of ABC Inc. in 1980 and has held on to them ever since. The company has not issued new shares since 1978. Since 1980, the company has made the following stock splits. A two for one split in 1985, a three for one split in 2004, and a one for four reverse split in 2009. Which of the following is false? A, Pete currently holds 150 shares of ABC Inc. B, Pete would hold a higher percentage of the company if he had bought 100 shares in 2005. C, Pete owns the same percentage of the company now as he did when he purchased the shares. Which one is false? If you said B, Pete would hold a higher percentage of the company if he bought 100 shares, you would be correct. One share from 1980 would be equivalent to one times two times three equals six shares in 2005, meaning to obtain the same ownership percentage as in 1980, someone in 2005 would have had to buy six times as many shares. A is correct because if Pete bought 100 shares in 2005, it would be 600 shares. And then in 2009, that 600 divided by four would be 150. So Pete currently does hold 150 shares of ABC Inc. And C, Pete owns the same percentage of the company now as he did when he purchased the shares. Absolutely. There's no information in this vignette to show that Pete bought additional shares. And because the stock splits, reverse and, um, and regular, do not impact the percentage of the company, C is correct. So B is incorrect because he would absolutely need to have bought an, uh, at over 150 in 2000 and five in order to have the same uh, percentage. So keep that in mind. Alrighty, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next.